Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and this is the Eastman Sport. It's an affordable and I think very nice looking electric commuter bike that's designed with functionality in mind. We're gonna put this bike through its paces today to see how it performs in the real world, so stick with us. So with an MSRP of just under $1,700, the Eastman Sport is definitely on the more affordable end of the spectrum when it comes to electric commuter bikes. But Eastman has done a very nice job with this bike of balancing cost effectiveness with components that perform very nicely. They've started with a 500 watt rear hub motor that's powered by a 48 volt 13.6 amp hour battery that notably is integrated into the frame. We often see bikes at this price point with their batteries bolted onto the outside, but this one did the more aesthetically pleasing option of putting that battery inside the frame. We also get some zoom hydraulic disc brakes, the 180 millimeter rotors front and rear, and then the drivetrain on this bike is another example of balancing cost effectiveness with performance. Eastman chose a S-Ride eight-speed drivetrain. Now, S-Ride is a component company that I'm really not very familiar with. They're very lesser known in the bicycling world, but I'm very surprised with how well the S-Ride component package has performed through our testing. The shifting's relatively crisp, the shifter feels nice, everything just seemed to work well. You also get a 100 millimeter suspension fork to kind of ease out the bumps on the road and you have a rear rack that's bolted directly to the frame that has a 55 pound weight capacity which is always important for carrying things to and from the office, picking up groceries, etc, etc. In addition to that, we also have some things that stand out as highlights to me for this bike. The first is just going to be the general looks of it. I personally am a really big fan of this kind of more upright, flat bar commuter bike. And then they also spec this bike with a set of fairly aggressive WTB tires. Now these are cool, one, because WTB is a brand that I know very well from the mountain bike world, and they make really good quality tires. In addition to that, it kind of gives this bike a little bit more of an off-road feel. Now, in no way do I think this is something that you should go and try and ride some single track or really even aggressive trails on. But if you do have some dirt roads on your commute or maybe you want to cut a corner on the bike path and go through the dirt, those tires are going to make you a little bit more confident in doing those things. There is a lot about this bike that we do like. There are some things that we do feel like are worth pointing out that we didn't like about it. The first is going to be those those tires. Though, though I love the WTB tires, I love the fact that they're grippy and a little bit more aggressive. We got four flats with them in one ride, which is notable. It's not terribly uncommon for us to get a couple of flats through a hundred or more miles of range testing and circuit testing that we do with these bikes, but four in one sitting is definitely something that makes us perk up and pay attention. And if you were to get this bike, it might be worth just off the bat to do some preventative flat prevention measures such as slime or putting in a, a strip around the tire or even just putting in thicker tubes, something to help you prevent those flats. Another thing that we've noticed with this bike is that 652 watt hour battery did not get the range that we expected. We'll dive into that a little bit later in the range test section of this review, but it's notably short. And then lastly, were those Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. Now Zoom is a company that's relatively new to us over the past year. We've seen it popping up on a couple of different brands of bikes, but it is a company that's so new we've had questions about the durability and even how easy it is to service those brakes. And this is the first bike where we've really seen any sort of problems. The problem we saw was in the rear brake with the rear lever just not really doing much anymore. It got very squishy over time. And even today on our testing, the rear brake lever just really isn't doing very much. We haven't tried to service that brake yet, but it is the type of component that if you take it to a bike shop, they may not be able to work on it. It's just not very common. They may tell you to replace it instead of repair it. Those are not deal breakers for me. Again, this is a relatively affordable bike. It's $1,700 MSRP, but they are things to note. Espen spec'd their sport electric bike with a set of Zoom hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. 
Now the zoom braking system is one that we've tested a couple times before. It's relatively new to us and new to the bicycle industry in general really, but they're ones that have performed decently well in the past. Now these brakes are actually probably going to be an interesting performer in our brake test and that's because the rear brake on this bike has developed an issue where the lever just really isn't doing very much. So I'm really going to have to be stopping with just my front brake here. Now we're continuing with this test because that's how the bike came to us. It's a problem that's developed through the course of testing. And frankly, with these zoom brakes, they're on the affordable side, they're on the relatively unknown side. We don't see them very often. So we want to see how they work even when they've developed an issue because you as the consumer may see a similar issue. So we're going to put this bike to the test and see how it goes under hard braking. So despite the issues we were talking about before going into our brake test, the Espen Sport performed very, very well, coming to a stop in an average of 13 feet and 2 inches, which is several feet above the current average of about 15 feet 8 inches. That's a shocking result considering I really only had the front brake to work with during this test. So, and that really kind of speaks volumes to how well these zoom brakes do perform when they're working well. I'm very curious to know how this bike would have stopped had I had access to the full power of the rear brake. Now, one thing to note about these zoom hydraulic disc brakes and really why we continued with this test even though we had that issue is because we do have questions about the longevity and how long these zoom brakes are going to last. We also have questions about how easy they're going to be to service. Hydraulic disc brakes aren't very easy to work on even when they're done perfectly. And on the affordable end of the spectrum, a lot of bike shops and a lot of people at home might find them tough to work on. So we haven't tried to fix this brake yet. We're going to in the future and we'll report back on how easy or how difficult it is to do. But know that if you do develop an issue and you only have one brake, it is gonna work shockingly well. So as we'd mentioned before, this 652 watt hour battery didn't quite do the range, the performance that we expected in our range test. And how we tested the range of this battery is you put it through two different tests. The first on PAS5 and where we rode the bike until it died and the second on PAS2. Now in that PAS5 test, we only got about 16.01 miles out of it before the battery died. And in PAS2, we got 36.34 miles. Now, neither of those are particularly stellar results. And we'd frankly have tested several batteries of this size on a bike with a 500 watt rear hub motor, and we've gotten much longer results. So this thing is not very efficient in how it consumes energy. One thing that's worth noting though, is that 16 miles on PAS5, we did a little bit over a 17 mile an hour average over that time. That is still a long distance. I think a lot of people would be surprised that 16 miles is probably longer than your average ride on an e-bike. And if you do pair the power down just a little bit, maybe you choose PS4 or PS3, you're very, very, very likely going to squeeze more range out of this bike. So while it's acceptable, the battery performance is probably something we'd like to see improved on the Eastman Sport in the future. The Eastman Sport's 500 watt rear motor is very fun. It's got a lot of pep to it, creates 65 newton meters of torque, which helps its ability to climb hills, which we'll analyze a little bit later in the hill test portion of this review. But moreover, it's just a quick feeling bike. It's limited to class two speeds, so that's 20 miles an hour in both pedal assist and with its th thumb throttle. It also comes with five levels of pedal assist, and to get an idea of how the bike performs in each of those five levels, we put it through a series of tests on the Electric Bike Report test circuit. The first of which was actually with no help from the motor, where we saw an average speed of about 11 miles an hour, give or take a couple of tenths. That's not bad, but it gives us an indication that this bike doesn't pedal super efficiently without help from the motor. Again, not something that's terribly uncommon on any of the e-bikes that we test. From there, we saw really nice measured increases in speed all the way up to 20 miles an hour or the bike's maximum motor assisted speed in PAS5. So it does a really good job of using its power. It's a fun bike, it's a quick bike. That motor is gonna serve pretty much anybody well.
Handling wise, the Eastman Sport is a very nice riding e-bike. It's got a good balance to it. This one is a 17 inch frame, which Eastman said is good for people between five foot six and six foot four. I would say that on, if you're on the upper end of that spectrum, you may find this bike feeling just a tad small. I'm six foot one, I've got fairly long legs and I had to max out the seat post and I still probably could have used about another inch of length to get a full leg extension, but it's comfortable, it's doable. The bike has a, a very nice handling profile in corners. It feels nice and balanced. You can go into corners at good amount of speed. And as I mentioned before, those knobbier WTB tires give it just a little bit more confidence in dirt or slightly off-road situations. Think about like dirt roads or like rails to trails path or even you know if you're on a bike path and you've got a, a situation where you need to ride off under the shoulder those tires are going to serve you very well in that situation. Um, cockpit wise you've got a very standard display it's just an, uh, a nice backlit LCD display you've got flat handlebars that are comfortable and decently wide which again helps with that handling profile you've got rubber grips which lock to the handlebars which I personally like if you watch our reviews you know I'm constantly complaining about the grips on affordable e-bikes these ones do a very nice job and you've also got a thumb throttle on the left hand side Everything about this bike is just nicely put together. It rides very nicely. It feels very nice underneath you. It's a good e-bike. So to get an idea of how the Eastman Sport goes uphill, we've brought it out to our test hill hell hole. Now hell hole is a third of a mile long. It's 12% gradient on average. That is plenty long and plenty steep to put this 500 watt rear hub motor to the test. Now, 500 watt rear hub motors sometimes struggle on this hill, so it's still to be determined on how the Eastman Sport is going to handle Hellhole, but this motor makes 65 Newton meters of torque, and paired with the bike's relatively light weight, I have a feeling we're gonna see a good result out of it. Now we're gonna do two laps up Hellhole, one with the throttle only, and then one in PAS5. So let's put this bike to the test and see how it performs. All right. <clears throat> This is the throttle only test for the Eastman Sport. We see what this 500 watt, 65 newton meter motor can do all on its own. We've got decently high hopes for this bike. The Eastman Nesta that we've reviewed did very well. It's doing decently, not decently good. Definitely slowing a bit on the steepest section of the hill, but I can feel that torque. It doesn't feel like it wants to give up. It's just slowing down. Yeah, we're gonna make it through this part just fine. <laughs> Gaining a little bit of speed on one of the flatter parts of the hill. Through one last steep pitch and then we should be home free. <clears throat> From here on out, it's relatively easy on it. Nearly to the top. There it is. All right. Now on the PAS5. Test for the Eastman Sport. Fairly good in the throttle only test. Let's see how it does with a little help from me. Still really impressed with this S-Ride drivetrain. There's shockingly good shifts under load. The 
this bike's doing just fine going up the hill. Not really much complaint from it at all, really. And it's going pretty quick. Say, just a good run up the hill. Almost to the top. There it is. The Eastman Nesta did just fine up our test hill hell hole, clearing the top and the throttle only test in one minute. 40 seconds with an average speed of 10.8 miles per hour. And then in the PAS 5 portion of the test, we saw it clear the top of the hill in one minute and 16 seconds with an average speed of 14.3 miles per hour. Those are great results from a bike with a 500 watt rear hub motor on a hill that often pushes 500 watt rear hub motor bikes to their limits and even sometimes to failure. So really great res result from the Eastman been set out to make the sport a very affordable and very functional and notably nice looking electric commuter bike and I think they've done a very good job of that. Obviously but there's been some things in this review that we've pointed out that we think could be improved upon namely the battery range. We had questions about the efficacy and the longevity of the brakes but overall I think they've done a very nice job of putting together an e-bike that rides well, that looks nice, and that's functional for your average commuter at a cost that's just not that high. There's a lot I've liked about this bike despite the gripes I've had. And one of the, the thing that's probably stood out the most to me is I just really like how the bike rides, the overall vibe of it that Eastman has tried to give the sport. That kind of like hybrid off-roady commuter bike that's flat bar. It's, it's almost a little bit like they're trying to build an urban assault bike or a, an e-bike that's designed to just really do anything that you ask of it in an urban environment. And I think that Eastman could be that. And I'm very curious to see as Eastman grows as a company, as they get better at building these direct consumer affordable e-bikes, how they're gonna fix some of these things that we've brought up in the review, these problems with the brakes, the problems with the battery, those types of things. I bet this bike very shortly is going to be a really, really nice affordable electric commuter. And I think if you were to buy it today, it would still be a very, very nice affordable electric commuter. Now, if you've liked learning about the Eastman Sport and if you enjoyed this review, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates from Eastman and from the other companies that we review. And also, if you wanna know more about this bike and look a little bit more deeply at the data we collected on it during the review process, be sure to click the link in the description below this video for more in-depth written review. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.